Hi everyone, I'm back with part three of this uh, tutorial series. Um, so, uh, since I've been away, or since uh, from last time, uh, what I've done is I've basically finished my model of my bishop. Right, so this is it. Um, and so what's changed since, the, since last time uh, is I've actually made all of the parts interlocking. So for example, if I'll take this piece here, I can move this up and you can see that, in fact, the two pieces make way for each other. So there's this slot in this one and there's a slot in this one. So they slot together. And so all of the pieces do that, uh, including these center sections uh, and these side pieces as well. What's happening here? Uh, so for example, this one, if I move this up or move this away, you can see that there's a set that it makes way for itself. Oh, but I've messed up this part here. I need to add a piece here. In fact, that might be a good thing to, to show you now. So I'm just going to move this over here and then undo it so that I bring it back. So there's a problem with this part. I wonder if that's the same on this section here. Let me move that out of the way and see. Yes, yeah, so this has the same issue, right? So there should be a second slot over here. So I'm going to show you how to create that second slot. In fact, I might just do it out here. So in order to work on this component, right, because it's a component, we know it's a component because it's got this blue border around it when I select it. So all of these pieces are, are components. So I'm going to go in here. And now I want to create another uh, another gap, the same as this one, over on this side. All right, so I've double clicked on the component. So I'm now inside of the component. So now what do I do right, to recreate this? So I could you know, start measuring things and adding and doing all that stuff. I'm not going to do that, right? So instead, uh, I'm going to make a little line segment. Where are we? Oh, no, so I'm not going to be able to find the halfway point again. That's a bit annoying. So let's see, what shall I do? Oh, this is a good question. So uh, actually, maybe I will have to measure. So I'm going to measure from this corner over to here. That's 10 millimeters. All right, good. So then uh, I'm going to make another measurement. At this time, I'm actually going to click here and then move along here. So that snaps to 10 mils there. So I'm going to click there. And you can see here, there's a tiny little dot there. So that's a uh, what's called a guide point. And we're going to use that to recreate this part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these four lines. So I'm holding down the shift key so that I can select multiple objects. So there we go. And I'm going to use the move tool. And so this corner here corresponds to this corner here. Since it's symmetrical, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to drag it from here. So I'm going to click here once. I'm going to move now. See that? That's terrible, isn't it? We don't want that. So we're going to hit the control key. And now I've got a copy of it. right? And I can now snap it over onto that guide, that guide point like that. And now that it's here, that's made that into a little surface of its own, which I can then push and pull to make a, to make a hole. All right. So there we go. Now I need to put this back. All right. So how am I going to put it back? Uh, so again, you want to use the um, the snap points that we've got. So for example, I'm going to, if I look at the bottom here, this piece here slots into here. So this corner here will correspond to that corner there. So if I select this and I go move, and then I select it at that endpoint, and then come over here and then snap it to there. Now it's perfectly in place, right where it's supposed to be. All right. So now, now I've got to do this other one. Uh, I'm going to show you a different technique now. This time I don't want to have to move it out of the way, but this thing is in the way. In the way I can't really see things. So I'm going to select this, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to hide this component. Now, um, I just want to show you, by default, you won't be able to see it once it's hidden, right? If you hide something, so let's say I'll hide this piece, right click, hide, right? It completely disappears, and you go, well, that's it, it's disappeared, I can't see it again. And you can't even right click to get it back because you can't select it, right? I'm sure there's a way of doing this. Uh, there's probably some hotkey to unhide things, uh, but you can go to the um, to the view menu. Uh, sorry, to the 
what this one called, this view tab with the, with the eyeglasses, and you can turn on view hidden objects. And they turn up as these kind of hashed objects here. Right, and so what I want to do is I want to use this part here to actually create the gap that it needs. Right, so uh, I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to start from there. So you can see even although that's hidden, I can still snap to that point. So I'm going to snap to there and then move over to here. And oh, that's not snapping there. So that's interesting. Uh, let's see, what should we do? Well, we know the thickness of it, so all we have to do is make sure we're going in the right direction. So on the green axis, and I'm just going to type in 3, which is the thickness of the material. So there, and then I can go up here. So again, I want to be on the blue axis. I'm going to hit the up arrow, and then I'm going to go to the in line with this corner here, let's say. So there, all right, escape, and there all right now I have made a mistake see if you uh, let's see I'm just going to move this temporarily you can see that it's not actually con connected what I did was I drew these lines without being in this component so that was a mistake all right so do I have to start everything over again no nope, don't actually have to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the pieces that I made Oh, that's exciting. So I'm going to be able to select this. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll just turn off all the hidden objects. So I'm going to select this ob these objects here that I just created. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to cut them using the cut tool. And then I'm going to go into this component. Right, well, this is the component that I wanted to be in. So I double click there. And now I'm going to right click and I'm going to use these um, icons up here. In fact, this is the one I'm going to use, paste in place. And so it pastes it exactly where it was, but now it's inside of the correct component. So now, pardon me, I'm just going to push pull this through. There we go. Now I need to get all my hidden components back. So I'll go back to my this thing, turn on hidden objects, and now I can select these hidden objects and unhide them. Unhide. Good. So my my um, this component's now finished, right? So this whole this whole model is now finished. Uh, I'm seeing this issue here, so that this doesn't doesn't need to be here. Oh, actually no, I'm missing a piece. Uh, Hmm, that's exciting. Oh, that's no, because I moved it over here. Well, that was a bit foolish. Uh, let's see, we'll just move this back. Uh, I'll move this from this corner here over to that corner there. That looks like it's in place. Right, so now, here we are. So we've got all of our, well, we've got our whole model made. Now, how do we laser cut it? Well, what we want to do is we want to take all of these objects and we want to lay them flat. And so, in particular, we're going to lay a copy of them flat. So, let's take this object. We'll make a copy of it. So, hit the control key, put it over here somewhere. It doesn't matter where. There. Right. Now, we'll select another piece. This piece. Move that. Again, make a copy of it. Out here. It can be floating in space. It doesn't really matter where it is. Now, this these objects are all exactly the same they've just been um they've just been duplicated so we only need to move one copy of it so say there and then let's take this piece there and this piece over here and then finally oh sorry Oh, no, 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 no. Let's do this again. Move tool. Hit the control key to make a copy. And then finally, a copy of the base. And we'll move that over here. Right, so now, so ideally what I want is for them all to, when I look down like this, I want them to be all lying flat on the 
on the ground plane. All right, so let's do that. So let's start by moving everything down onto the ground plane. So I've got this copy here. So one way to do this is to click on one of the bottom edges, hit the up arrow key while we're moving it, and move it to uh, the origin or to the base of this or something like that. So let's say there. All right, so once I've got one of them, I can then do the rest of them pretty easily. So say this one, again, move it up and down, and this time I want to line it up with that piece there. So that's now all on the ground. Same with this. Now I want to select that point there and move it up and down there. Is this right? Oh, that didn't work out very well, did it? Um, never mind, we'll just keep persevering. Again, I'm going to move in the, in the Z direction and snap it to there. This is a bit better. Again, click the up arrow key and snap it so that it ends up being down there. And then this one again uh, will snap to this corner here and the up arrow and down arrow key. So that's there. So now let's see what parts are not right. So this part here needs to move up a bit. So let's say there. Right, so now we've got all of the pieces sitting on the ground plane all separated. So now we've got to flip them over. So I'm going to use the rotate tool here. And so just take this bottom corner. Uh, and then we want to make sure that we're in the right orientation. So let's say there, up to this corner here, and lie this flat. So I'll just type in 90 so that. So that's lying flat there, and this one, again, rotate this around, so let's see, we're going to snap to the corner here, uh, here again, we want to be in the right orientation, to that, there to there, and then lie it down like that. And then we just keep doing that. Oh, this is going in the wrong direction. Um, oh goodness. This corner here, again in the right direction this time. I'm going to pull the axis and we're going to move it down by 90 degrees. Just type in 90, press enter, and then we just keep going. Select this piece, rotate it. Type in 90. Right, so now all of my pieces are lying down. Oh, no, I've got one piece left. Uh, I'll just leave that one for now. So now, what we want to do next is we want to move them so that they're all nicely orientated. So uh, let's see, we'll use the move tool. I'll show you also, uh, you can use the move tool also to rotate things. Uh, I'll show you that next. So we want them to be relatively close together. Um, now, to stop them from jumping up and down, one of the things you can do is to just use the arrow keys to kind of force it to just go in one direction at a time. So for example, there, and then from there, uh, I'll move it again over this way, like that. This is a really useful technique to use so that you don't get really confusing um, orientations and stuff. Uh, right, what else? So, so this one, let's move that one. Over to here, we want to be, you know, relatively uh, efficient, as efficient as we can, because this is going to be our pattern for laser cutting. So we don't want to waste a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of material. So like a little gap like that is perfect. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see this one here. We'll move this one over. 
Again, doing it in one direction at a time is very useful. That way you don't you won't get surprised by things you know jumping down a whole lot or up or whatever. Right, so uh, and then we'll move this as well. So there. Um, and so I'm going to ignore this part for now. Um, but what we want to do next is we want to explode all these. So we want to actually we don't want them to be three dimensional. We want them to be two dimensional now. So we're going to um, actually we're going to select all of these, and then we're going to right click and we're going to explode them. Explode. And so when we do that, they now become normal objects again, so that can be edited in this that similar way. So now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with some viewing uh, issues. Now I have to remember where this is. Um, solid inspector, model overlay, scenes. There we go. Yeah. So what we want is, so at the moment, things that are far away get smaller and smaller, right? Like this. Um, in relation to each other as well. So the things that are up close look bigger than things that are far away. We're using, in other words, a perspective um, viewport. What we want to do is we want to go into a parallel projection so that everything stays the same. So see that no matter how much you, well, you, everything stays relatively the same, right? So then what we can do is we can start looking at it from the top. So this is what our pattern is going to look like, but we don't want it to be three dimensional. So I'm going to go back here I'm going to go um, to our scene view. Uh, I'm just going to choose a side view that's going to work for us. Let's see this one or that one. Oh, I see it here. See this? That's not flat. That's really annoying. Never mind. Uh, I'll just show you uh, with the other ones what you're meant to do. So let's see. We'll just use these ones here, right? So we don't want any of the stuff on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a selection. Of everything that's not the ground part. And when I select it, if I selected it from the other from the other way around, it would only select the top surface. But if you go so that's from left to right, if you go from right to left with the selection, it selects everything that it touches, which we can then delete. So now when we look at it in 3D, these are just flat surfaces. Right? So I'm going to deal with that stuff later. I don't need you to kind of hang around while I fix my mistake. Now I'm going to go to my top view, and this is what I'm going to export to um, to Illustrator, right? Um, that is pretty much it. So I'm going to show you how to do the exporting to Illustrator and what to do once you get into this Illustrator uh, in the next video. So in the meantime, thanks very much for coming and watching. Hopefully it worked for you. Thanks. See you.